I'm talking about testosterone as a ubiquitous molecule that's undervalued and underappreciated. My disclosures are I've, I've been part of the AUA guidelines as a non-urologist helping develop the guidelines for ED, testosterone deficiency, Peronis, and now for prostate cancer screening. And I work, I do some work for a few um, small testosterone companies. Um, one of the people that are most influential in my life was Andy Gay. And this is a photo of Dr. Gay and Abe Morgenthaler and Mo Kira and Abzul Trash back in 2015. And it's important to remember all the, the people that really have an impact in your life. So we're going to speak about why testosterone therapy is so underappreciated. Um, it's important for male sexual desire, muscle mass, mood, motivation, but why is then testosterone deficiency and testosterone therapy undervalued? Is it because in a prior life it was the domain of bodybuilders at super physiologic levels? And we know that Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds, everyone's still waiting to get into the Hall of Fame if they ever do, we know that the man who's hit more home runs than anyone has never, um, Alex Rodriguez, still hasn't been elected to the Hall of Fame. So it's because of anabolic steroid use and his testosterone, that anabolic steroid. Testosterone deficiency is associated with vital general medical conditions facing all societies, type two diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis, and coronary artery disease. What I do day in and day out is see men for two issues, erectile dysfunction, and because I do testosterone levels on those men, and because I'm evaluating the cardiometabolic risk of those men, I, under, under, I uncover um, a lot of testosterone deficiency. And what happens, or what's happened, is it's no longer being done in primary care. They're not repleting testosterone, and they're not repleting testosterone because they're fearful after the FDA changed the labeling in 2015 to prevent the desire to prescribe testosterone for comorbid testosterone deficiency, meaning testosterone deficiency that's associated with obesity, and high blood pressure and dyslipidemia. So testosterone de therapy has shown compelling health benefits, and most recently, testosterone levels have been associated with the most urgent medical issue that we've been facing in the last few years, and that's COVID-19. Um, it's been shown to reduce the rate of severe infection and it's been shown to be associated with the highest rates of mortality, which is really interesting because the last thing that you're going to think about when a patient's in the ICU is checking a, a testosterone level for their COVID and supporting them with testosterone therapy. So the T trials came out in 2016. And it's the largest randomized trial to date. You know, testosterone doesn't have a lot of randomized trials. 790 men older than age 65 with unequivocally low levels of testosterone treated with one year, one year, of placebo or 1% gel. The benefits were not simply sexual meaning erections and libido, but in that one year, that short time, we saw an improvement of physical mobility, mood, energy, bone density, and strength. But most of these benefits were dismissed as minor and not clinically significant. Testosterone is a metabolic sexual and vascular hormone that serves an important metabolic function and plays a key role in human physiology and health. It improves the signs and symptoms of testosterone deficiency without serious AEs, and the T-trials and the 
testosterone for diabetes mellitus provided evidence that testosterone therapy in older men improves sexual function, mood, ameliorates anemia of known and unknown causes. And it improves bone mineral density and bone strength, and it may indeed reduce fracture risk and fracture rate in men. And it's associated with a reduced risk of vascular and overall mortality. And low T is associated with an increased incidence of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So what are the facts and what are the levels of evidence? It improves sexual function modestly. It may improve mild to moderate depression. It improves bone mineral density, muscle, and reduces fat mass. It improves strength and exercise endurance. It may reduce cardiovascular mortality and all-cause mortality. Within six months, we're going to see the results of the Traverse study, which is five years of testosterone gel versus placebo in 3,000 men with low levels and at least one symptom. And with the type 4 diabetes mellitus study, we see the benefits of testosterone therapy in preventing type 2 diabetes, equivalent to metformin. So this is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled two-year phase 3B trial involving um, six Australian tertiary centers enrolling men with low levels. These men had, were not hypogonadal per U.S. standards. Their levels were below 400. And they all had visceral adiposity. And the aim was to determine whether testosterone therapy prevents progression to or reverses type 2 diabetes beyond the effects of standard lifestyle. So you had these men all had visceral adiposity. They were aged between 50 and 74. Their levels were below 400, and they were at risk or had type 2 diabetes. They were randomized to either a lifestyle plus testosterone and decanoate every 12 weeks, the long-acting, or placebo and lifestyle. And what you saw was that testosterone therapy plus lifestyle significantly reduced the prevalence of type 2 diabetes versus lifestyle intervention alone. And it decreased the prevalence of type 2 diabetes by almost 41% versus placebo. What we see is that among men with low levels and at high risk for type 2 diabetes, these were men who had abnormal glucose tolerance tests, testosterone therapy and lifestyle prevented progression to type 2 diabetes in twice as many cases versus lifestyle alone. And these, uh, again, were men with low levels. You saw that, that among men with low levels and type 2 diabetes, that it reversed type 2 diabetes in over 10% more cases than lifestyle alone. And that testosterone perhaps restored insulin sensitivity we don't know exactly the mechanism for this. What about testosterone and prostate cancer? Stacy Loeb at um, NYU found in a national prostate cancer registry that patients who received testosterone therapy had a lower risk of aggressive prostate cancer than those who did not. And we've known for a long time that men who are hypogonadal have more aggressive prostate cancer than men who are you going at all? Allering found in hypogonadal men following radical prostatectomy that cancer recurred in 7.2% of men receiving testosterone therapy versus 12.6% of men who did not. The recurrence rate was 50% lower. And in bipolar androgen therapy, which is done used to treat metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer, Schweitzer found in 14 men treated with high-dose testosterone injections every four weeks while on ADT resulted in superphysiologic levels of testosterone followed by castrate levels and demonstrated a 50% reduction in PSA. So patients receiving BAT reported significant improvement in quality of life 
fatigue, and sexual function. And most recently, Hudson in Lancet Longevity reviewed 35 placebo-controlled trials of TRT, 5,600 male participants, and had individual participant data. There was no significant increased risk of cardiovascular events between testosterone therapy and placebo, and this is the largest individual analysis of T trials to date. The UK Biobank, 160,000 men, median age of 61, 826 developed dementia, and 288 developed Alzheimer's disease. The lowest testosterone, total testosterone levels were associated with the highest dementia quintile. So a lower tes total testosterone and a higher SHBG are independently associated with incident dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And is male hypogonadism a risk factor for hospitalization from COVID? Um, Sandeep Dehinza at WashU looked at 723 men and published in JAMA, um, mean age 55, 116 of these men had hypogonadism, and 147 were eugonadal. 180 received testosterone therapy. The men with hypogonadism were more likely than men with eugonadism to be hospitalized with COVID-19. And you can see on this graph that those men with lower levels had a much higher rate of hospitalization and a much higher rate of being in the ICU. And men who received inadequate testosterone therapy defined as subnormal concentrations had higher odds of hospitalization compared to men who had normal levels. So men's health and what I do and what I try to have done at our centers and sexual medicine are correlated across all major chronic disease areas and they impact men across all racial and ethnic and social economic and geographical boundaries and that's what's part of the metabolic or cardiometabolic workup. Um, Mark Moy had always said you have to have a puppy slide so this is my puppies. I wanted to talk briefly, two minutes, about erectile dysfunction because we're going to have a very important meeting in March um, known as the Princeton Four Guidelines. This was a lifestyle study published by Dean Ornish and Robert Ostfield and other cardiologists looking at erectile dysfunction. And the IIEF score increased on an average of four, which is the same level as oral PD-5 therapy in a very, very intense exercise program and lifestyle um, mitigation. The increase was likely mediated through weight loss and consuming a Mediterranean diet rich in plant-based foods. The Princeton Four that I mentioned is being led by R R Ray Rosen and Robert Cloner. And it's going to look at potential benefits of PD-5 inhibitors and the algorithmic use of these potential inhibitors. Are we gonna have a polypill of statin and tadalafil for men to be taken on a daily basis with the addition potentially of um, losartan, an ARB inhibitor? So, this was a study that came out this week by Bob Cloner and Ray Rosen, and they looked at the, um, d were looking to determine the effect of PD5s on MACE, major adverse cardiovascular events. They matched a multivariate analysis, and they showed that MACE was lower by 13% in 24,000 men exposed to PD5 therapy versus non exposure. And this was true for coronary revascularization with an overall lower incidence of 25% of mortality. Here you see over the past five years, nine studies that also note a significant 
cardiovascular um, risk reduction in MACE and mortality. And it's up to 